I'm back. As I promised, I would be here to answer your questions. Today I'm trying out my new film camera, hence me having this uh, ridiculous looking microphone. Uh, but I'm guessing and hoping that the sound will be better for you guys. I'm slowly learning this, these uh, technicalities in order to give you the best possible picture and sound. So, straight into your questions. We have a question from Gallo Moore who wants me to tell him or her about uh, the time when we were recording the Inner Circle album, uh, which was recorded in 2002 and 3, I think. Uh, at that time we had this big ass uh, studio where we could uh, pretty much do what and whatever we wanted and uh, and uh, it was like 500 square meters. We were really fortunate to have a friend of ours in from for, from the US who, who ran this professional studio with us called the Division One Studios. Uh, most of the things uh, is available, I guess, on YouTube. Uh, if you search for a, the, a Night to Remember DVD, I guess yeah, you can still buy it. Uh, and on the on the on the what do you call it? The extra material. There's like six and a half hours of us being in that studio dur during the time of the recording for that album, among a lot of other things. Six and a half hours, so go check that out. But you also have another question regarding a string quartet and uh, why we wa what made us wanted to go with a real one. Well, at that time, samples and stuff back in 2002, yes, there were samples that sounded great, but they were huge libraries of... Uh, of samples, uh, and they still are, but today the computers are sort of uh, matching up with the the, the rec rec recording flow you need. Uh, so uh, we decided to have a real, real uh, corded as Henrik's relative, I guess it was, was also part of this Gothenburg Symphonic Orchestra playing the cello. So uh, yeah, who composed those parts? Uh, we did pretty much all of them together. I write a lot of uh, keyboard stuff and uh, uh, violin stuff and so did uh, Jonas but the big uh, workload was on Jonas very young also debut album and also writing the sheet music for for those parts for the quartet maybe not that difficult parts but on the other hand really cool to be able to have a drummer to do that for you or for us at that time Than Liasco, I don't know if I pronounce your guy your guys' names correctly, but you bear with me. Would you go back in time and change something in any of your song, or you feel satisfied with everything you released so far? No, I would never go back and change anything. And I would I can't swear on my soul, but I'm pretty certain that I will never re-record an album unless somebody gives me a hell of a lot of money. Because uh I think it's also disrespectful to 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 the fans re-recording. It's basically that you're re-recording memories, you know, or the sounds to your life at that time. So no, I won't. Uh, I, uh, I wouldn't go back and change anything. And I, we are very thorough when we're recording. I mean, very anal and very rarely something slips through that we didn't intend uh, for it to be there. So. I'm sure there are things, but I, not to the point where I will go back and say, hey, it's worth all the hassle to, to fix this. Uh, there's no notes or anything like that. Not that I'm aware of anyway. And that's what's important. Uh, so yeah, I'm basically satisfied with everything we released so far, uh, without a doubt. Uh, can you rank all the Evergrey albums? No, I can't. Probably not. You say it yourself. Every grade for life. Uh, if not, I would you want you to tell me your five favorite every, every grade albums. That's basically the same thing. Uh, I didn't think about doing a little concert at home either. Maybe five songs you normally play live, but maybe we could do an acoustic show for you guys. That's something that we've been talking about anyway, but let's see. We're in the midst of album recordings as well right now, so there's a lot of things for us to do. Um, I'm healthy, thank you very much. How do you play the intro and solo of Disconnect? That's more a question for when, when I show you something. What is something we should know about Swedish culture? Any great Swedish foods to try? There's a lot of Swedish food to try. Uh, Sweden is a country 
who uh, sort of brought up a lot of really good chefs uh, if you're into the fine dining things but we also have Swedish meatballs of course and a Swedish chef from the Muppets if you remember that one people from Sweden are very we like to stand in line we'd like to do as we're told and we like to to sort of um, and I'm not saying like 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 uh, but we do what we're told basically which is a great thing uh, right now in these times of corona because Nobody is complaining about standing in light or a uh, line or, or, or uh, like uh, six feet apart. Uh, everybody just do what they're told. It might be a bad thing as well, but let, let's not get into that. Who had the idea to cover I'm sorry, says Juan Elv. Uh, it was actually me, uh, because I love that song and I, I loved it from the second it came out and uh, when Dilma Demirbag uh, released it. Uh, the story behind the video clip, well, isn't that pretty obvious in the video? <laughs> uh, you, you follow a guy uh, through uh, periods of his life and all of, when you roll the video backwards, the guy is not there anymore and then you can see why. So, it's a sort of remem remembrance video idea. Uh, 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 Mandalore. The riff you were playing definitely makes me think of the torn era, okay. Uh, let's see, Luca says, what is the best and worst part of making a new album? The best part is letting go of your creativity, I guess, and getting really nerdy with every detail. I love that part, I love to be in the studio. Uh, not more than playing, well, maybe actually more than playing live, but I really, really, really love it. It's, uh, it's, um, I think it's something that I need in order to survive. I need to be able to create and also, it's like painting a wall in a sense, you know? When you're painting a wall, you see the result immediately. When you're doing music, you can have immediate results as well. Even though if the, even though the whole song is not finished at once, you at least get, ah, I hear this and hear this in your head and then you can get it out. And being in this time of technology as well, it's extremely easy just to record your ideas on your phone. That's something I do all the time. As soon as I have an idea of a lyric or like a line or a sentence or, or like a vocal phrase, I sing it or talk it into this. Or if I have uh, ideas for riffs, it, I have like 200 clips where, where I sound like and then I'm listening to it the morning after and I was like, what the fuck is this, man? I'm not making any sense. What key is it in? What uh, time signature? <laughs> What's the tempo? So, and uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, the worst part of making an album is the same thing, that you're in this creative process so much that maybe all the people around you are getting sort of being left behind in a way because when I'm starting sort of to create this world for me that I need to be in in order to write the most impressive stuff for myself, uh, I need to be in it as much as possible. Uh, I need to turn off the phone and all those things. But uh, I was actually thinking that we could do a video about talking about creativity and how to enhance that and what I do and like, like a top five or ten list of things to do that I do. Uh, that helps me get on the way every day. So yeah. Shirley Cairo says, in Ohio where I live, we have been in lockdown. No work, no school. How strict are the isolation rules in Sweden? Not that strict. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the social distance rules and uh, we are encouraged not to travel uh, within the country even. Uh, and uh, if you go and eat on a restaurant, there has to be a, like a table in between you guys and stuff like that. But it's not a lockdown, but it's starting to feel like one anyway, I, I, I guess. Gabriela Lando, how was Gothenburg, Göteborg metal scene since the beginning and how is it nowadays? Do you guys usually hang all bands together? Yes, we do. A lot of us are friends and a lot of us know each other and of course we've been in the same business for for like 25 years now and but on the other hand I wasn't really part Evergrey wasn't part of the Gothenburg metal scene back in the day per se uh, we weren't playing melodic death metal at the time so I'm not 
an expert of it. Uh, I know my friends in, in Dark Tranquility and In Flames and, uh, and bands like that have a bigger... I mean, they were the creators of this, of this uh, s style of metal, so I'll leave it to them to answer that, unfortunately. Jakub Harry Harshilak, Harshilak maybe, correct? When playing a gig, do you prefer playing to click, I guess, to a beat? Uh, no, because I don't. Uh, uh, Jonas has a click for some songs where we have backing tracks like, you know, big choirs or the spoken parts and stuff like this. We don't have a guy sitting in the back talking like uh, people from the album, so. Uh, I like both. I like it because I like to perform the music as, uh, as it's supposed to sound. So whatever gets us there. Todd Enderby. Dream Tour, I'm guessing with Maiden or Priest. Dream Tour, definitely with Iron Maiden if I could choose. Definitely. Uh, them is my all-time favorite King Diamond album. Good for you, it's the same for me. Radic. No, sorry, Jesse Parrish. Radek says, Radek Vijek, maybe? Hey Tom, I know that you write most of the keyboard parts. Or some, yeah, some, some is uh, correct. And, and I'm interested in how you're approaching them, especially not to dilute the heaviness of the guitars. Well, I don't think in those terms of producing that much when writing a keyboard part. Jesus. So, sounding greatly out of tune. <laughs> so it seems to be my life. Everything is out of tune. Especially me. What was the question? Yeah, uh, I like to write on keyboard. I have a... No, I can't pull it out now. Huh? There's a keyboard here. There's a piano there. I like, to, I like the sense of making melodies and, and harmonies on keyboard. And I'm not that talented at even doing the chords, but I like to play like melodies and stuff. Uh, uh, that sort of gets me going to the next part of the song, basically, or, or whatever. Hence, what the Silent Skies uh, project that I have with uh, Vikram is is a really great thing where, where uh, I have this super talented companion that is extremely gifted on the piano, and I can fuck around with ideas, and he can make them sort of come to life, and and I can put uh, music and lyrics to his, uh, to his um, uh, uh, vocals and lyrics to his music, basically. So we do trade off things like that. And for the Evergrey, yeah, I, like a, I write a lot of keyboard parts, of course, so does Rickard and, 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 uh, and so does Jonas. Uh, when me and Jonas are presenting songs to the band, we usually sort of give them the whole package. Here's pretty much what we, th we think how it should sound and then we Fuck around with it together and it becomes an Evergrey song. Uh, <laughs> and thank you guys for all these questions. It's extremely great that you are interested. Michael Kruse, from a technical point, which Evergrey song would you point to and say it is the most challenging that you are proud to have pulled off? Pulled off in terms of writing. <sighs> I don't really, we don't really thinking that way either. Uh, but I, I remember when we wrote uh, When the Walls Go Down, like an instrumental song we have on the Inner Circle album, the last, we just, uh, a bunch of the guys in the band thought, okay, well, let's, let's settle with, if it was nine or 10 songs. And I really wanted to make another song. And I think Jonas wanted to wait, make one more. And then we sort of came together and did four parts each. So Rick had a part, Henrik had a part, I had a part, and Jonas had a part. And we came together, and then we added all these samples on top of it. So that was a challenging song to, to, uh, to uh, complete, in a way. But also the crea creative process of that song is also fantastic. And the result I'm super happy with. I'm not sure that answered your question even, but... The, what is your favorite song riff to play at the moment? Oh God, I like the... Oh, okay. I really like the start of uh, a silent arc, especially since that that sort of kicks off the show as well, you know, for us lately. And it's a Jonas riff actually. Jonas wrote that riff, so it's great for me. 
Sarah Cruz Abraham's Pollen. How personal are your lyrics? 100%. Except for maybe In Search of Truth. But those lyrics, you know, the albums where I have sort of added fiction to a story are somewhat always based on my feelings anyway, you know, so they they come from or arise from what I have felt or somebody close to me have felt or experienced. So uh, I can't write about Dungeons and Dragons. I leave that to, to other people who have met dragons and have had a sword in their hand. It's easier for me to write about uh, things like uh, heartache. <laughs> oh God. And yes, I mean, there are songs that she, uh, Sarah keeps on asking if there's a song that sort of is emotionally hard for me to sing. Not at the time of singing, but at the time of creating the songs, uh, it, it sometimes can be very hard and draining. But at the, because it's sort of a, it's sort of therapeutic to me, I guess, to write. And uh, but when the song is written it very rarely happens that I feel so engaged in the song. I mean, I'm extremely engaged in the song, but to the point where I lose myself. It happened once or twice. Uh, and Missing You is one of those songs. So I actually had a song. I'm so fragmented that it's unbelievable. JB! Still curious on a, a Secret Atlantis background dialogue during the bridge? That's not a question. Prior to the first solo. You have to be more precise, Jay. Then I will answer your question. Uh, same with Lone Wolf Airsoft. Can you tell me everything about Paradox of the Flame? No, you have to be more precise. Paradox, Paradox of the Flame is a song and a video off of the Storm Within album. Talking about relationships and the ending of them, I guess. That's as far as I can get right now without you being more precise. Uh, what advice do you have for someone that wants to start singing for a band like you do? Don't start to sing in a band like I do. Start in a band like Iron Maiden or Metallica or somebody that is bigger. Then you will have more money. Uh, no, but I get your question. Javier Rodriguez. Uh, I, the advice, as always, is to do what feels right to your heart. That would bring you, if not furthest, it at least will keep you happiest, the happiest for the longest amount of time. Even though I'm not a huge selling artist, I'm still uh, extremely proud of what I've done and I can keep doing this for until I'm so fat that I fall off the stool, I guess. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So stay true to yourself. That's my uh, sort of key, key uh, tip. Dave? No, Maximus Skywalker. Sky Rocker, actually. Do you have some favorite video games and TV shows? No, I don't. I'm not. Yeah, video games, FIFA, soccer. That's it. TV shows, a lot of them. I right now I'm watching uh, The Outsiders. I watch that, and and uh, what uh, what else is there? The Leftovers. Uh, of course, Game Game of Thrones. Love that. Um, there's so much. It's actually giving me a slight heart attack, a heart attack to think of the things that I'm missing. Uh, that I don't have the time to watch, so... Uh. Where can I find accurate base tabs and transcriptions? No idea. I'm sorry. Uh, you should encourage Johan to start a channel. Could you tell us what made you decide... Uh, Icifer? Maybe, yeah, I cipher 1926. Could you tell us what made you decide on the change of every great sound from the inner circle to Monday morning apocalypse and onwards? Well, when we decide to work with different people, we don't really decide on, um, on uh, let's change the sound. We work with people because we feel that they bring something new to Evergrey. So that's what we decided on. And when you say from Inner Circle to Monday Morning Apocalypse and onwards, well, the, I, I can tell you a lot have happened in the sound, especially if you compare to Monday Morning Apocalypse and today. There's a bunch of albums in between there as well where we, we have chosen to work with different producers, uh, mixing guys, 
band members even. So uh, to sort of put them in the same category, sounding the same, is not really fair, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, to answer the question, uh, we we wanna we wanna explore new worlds. We want to. We're not the same person, you know. Uh, when we started, I was 20 years old. Today is 26 years later. Things change, we change, you change, and also the perception, I think, very often from the fans is that the thing you heard first or the thing that you fell in love with first, the same with me. I fell in love with a uh, piece of mind with Iron Maiden. It's, it's, it's uh, hard for me to find an album that is better than that one for me. But when uh, Hannes was in the band, Hannes who now plays drums in Sabaton, he came into Evergrey. He was much younger, and he, I asked him. We ended up discussion, uh, discussing Iron Maiden, and he, and he, and he, when he told me that Brave New World was his favorite album, I was like sort of amazed. I remember Joe and me was like, "Dude, you're fucked up. That's not even Bruce Dickinson, right? It isn't, right? So yeah, yeah." We need a new live recording. Yes, we do. ASAP. That is not a question. You are w correct, Mr. Tarkus. It's not a question. Uh, the Evergrey tour. If Evergrey could tour with any five bands, which five would you want them to be and why? The five biggest bands or the five most influential bands. I would love to have a, a lineup with Pink Floyd, Iron Maiden, Ingve Malmsteen, Dream Theater, and uh, a fifth band. Ah, the fifth band. I don't know, man. Maybe something totally diverse, like Susan Sundfer. Yeah, that's it. How does your writing process and inspiration now compare to how it was now compared to how it was during the creation of Dark Discovery? Wow, I think it's pretty much the same, to be honest. I'm all over the place trying to figure out what I want to do, but no, it's not. I'm more focused. I have also an environment where I can create and be super focused in. At that time, I was carrying around my amplifier like any other person at that stage of life, you know, uh, and trying to figure life out. Uh, as well as trying to figure out how we wanted to sound as a band, you know, so it's uh, What differs today is that I'm more focused, more straight to the point, and I also have this sort of know-how, how to get my ideas from the fingers and the head and the brain that keeps on buzzing and is always never silent, uh, and get that out and into the computer, you know, extremely Extremely happy for the sort of technology helping me with, uh, otherwise I would be going crazy, basically. Uh, and that question came from uh, Evergrey06. Now I have a question from Lulia Lorraine, maybe? Hi Tom, just a curiosity. Why did you and Karina break up? Yeah, it's a pretty weird and a very personal question. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm gonna keep that to myself. How do you keep the band members together for so many years? I know some of them left, but how does a band survive? You gotta keep loving what you do. And when you don't love what you do, you should do something else. That's what happened with Jonas and Henrik when, they, when uh, we decided they should leave every way. Uh, we didn't have any intentions or plans that they would come back, but then we missed each other and we came back and we started making music again together that we do love. Uh, so basically, yeah, that's it. Same person asks, uh, do you ever experience winter's, no, writer's composer's block and feel bad about it? Yes, a lot, of, a lot of times. But for me, it's like we're starting a cycle, right, of writing because we tour and then we start writing and we tour, we start writing. And the hardest part for me is to actually think I posted something about this, but I, is to get started. As soon as I get started, it takes me like seven, 10 days to sort of get into the roles of things happening again and my mind to sort of adapt to being a, a creative, uh, in, inspiring artist instead of a performing artist, if that makes sense. Uh, so, and as soon as I get by those seven, 10 days, cheers by the way, I'm gonna have a coffee now, thank you very much. Mmm. 
Hmm? Then it sort of rolls on. But there are, of course, days where you don't have any urge or uh, don't want, where you don't feel like you want to do anything. And then, then I have to at least get into the room and sit down and try. If I can do one thing today, then maybe I can't, but at least then I try. You have those days that you have to sort of pass as well in order to get to the next day where things are coming back to you again. Nathan, even though Karina and you are not together anymore, will she be singing on any future material? I do enjoy her singing. I do enjoy her singing as well, but no, I, I'm pretty certain she won't. Uh, not because we're not friends or anything, but for natural reasons. Uh, Brian Terry, hello Tom, have you ever considered releasing an EP or just one or two new songs instead of a full-length album? Yes, we have done this before as well, for a bunch of songs. It's uh, but not uh, lately. We actually considered starting doing just one song at a time. So what do you think about that idea? Answer is below please. Should we do albums or should we do one song at a time? Tyler, when and how did you meet Henrik? I met Henrik in 2000, in the year 2000, in the music shop where I worked called Musik utan gränser in Gothenburg. Henrik was a customer, I was a worker, and uh, yeah, I heard him play and I digged his playing and he was in another band and like a bunch of months or a year maybe later, I guess, I, I asked him if he wanted to join when Daniel quit. So yeah. I love everything you've done musically outside of Evergrey. I was wondering if you could be interested in ever to work with Tobias Summit and on an Avantasia record. I think your voice be, would add an additional dynamic to their sound. Are you at all familiar with the band? I am very familiar with uh, the band. I'm not, uh, I haven't bought any albums or anything, but we've played for so many festivals together where I watched them. So yeah, I really like to be a summit as a performer as well. I think it's great. So um, basically all for working with everyone that is uh, bring quality to the, to the scene. And uh, Tobias is one of those guys. Uh, <laughs> OC. Stating the question from last time as it didn't make the cut last time. Yeah, hopefully it makes the cut now. Looking back, is there a song or album you were particularly proud of at the time, but now you're not as much, or at least there are many things that would write differently in it today? No, it's not. I, I answered this before too, I guess, uh, OC. Uh, I'm... I'm um, I am uh, very happy with everything we have done, basically. What, which is your favorite Redemption song from the album you're on and from their past? Those are two questions. Uh, favorite uh, Redemption song today... Uh, I gotta refresh my memory, hold on. Since I'm in, in, in this frame of mind... I think Indulgent Color, yes. It's one of it was one of my uh, favorite songs from from uh, the album I'm on, and uh, and I think if you're talking about uh, I think Walls is one of the songs where Ray sings that I'm really the most fond of to to sing. Bebebebebanonbrecken. <sighs> where did you go from blonde to dark haired? Maybe like eighty. Eight. I saw some really old interview with a clip from Bingo Lotto, yes. It was from this DVD we're on. Can you give a rough resume of the story of the Atlantic? Actually, there's... The Atlantic and the hymns for the broken and the storm within is the same story. It's just about me getting from one point in life to another. And I think the less I tell you about it, like this, uh, the more you will get out of it, in a sense. Because if I start painting the picture for you and telling you that these words mean this and uh, this sentence means that, then that I'm sort of... I want you to, to, to create your own story out of my words, if possible. Um, hi, Tom. 
I think it would be cool to assemble up an instrumental track for the next album. When the Walls Go Down must have been uh, the last original release from the Inner Circle album. Uh, yeah, let's see. It all depends on where we end up. Uh, if we feel there's a room for an instrumental, we will definitely have one. I really dig it as well. Sometimes I really dig instrumental music much more than vocals because it's sort of... And that's my mind ease. Uh, uh, uh. Todd Weimer. Hi Todd. As a younger man, if your destiny were veered in a different direction, you didn't start a band and wind up playing music for a career, what would you th what do you think you would be doing now? In other words, what were you studying or training to become if music wasn't an option? Hmm. I didn't study anything else at that time. Uh, however, after a long while, sort of in between, before we, before I ended, before Henrik and Jonas came back, I was fed up with Evergrey and I wanted, to, I felt like I needed to do something else as well. So I started studying on a university and I've uh, also worked as a therapist for cancer patients. So I studied for that for four and a half years. Uh, on the university and uh, and then some additional courses. I worked at a hospital here in Gothenburg uh, where I could work when I got home from tours, which also sort of was a perfect way for me to land in a real world uh, with real people in a sense. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think that answers your question. Uh, so I have that to fall back on if, uh, if, uh, if music uh, becomes too tiring or uh, less successful so that I need to work somewhere else. But right now I'm happy with doing the music. Jose Roja Carillo. What was your inspiration for Departure's lyrics? Same thing. Departure is about getting from... It's about leaving, basically. And the rest of it I think you have to figure out by yourself. I'm sorry. Danny Waz. Good evening, Tom. Always great to see you. You too, even though I don't see you. Your approach to writing takes a lot of people on such a deep emotional journeys. Evergrey's music connects on so many levels. Are many of the songs written derived from personal experiences or just thoughts passing through? No, as I answered before, they are all based on th things or stuff that I went through myself or that somebody uh, I know went through but I think you had that question answered before so but thanks anyway uh, here's questions three questions for Gipoli 22 best band artist ever impossible but I would say if I have to choose Pink Floyd greatest song in the world high hopes Pink Floyd greatest Evergrey album and best song from the Evergrey from Evergrey for you impossible to answer Totally impossible. I'm super happy with every each and every album and I sort of represent a time in my life at the same time that it would be saying what time of life did you enjoy the most? I enjoy all of them. Uh, maybe not entirely true, but uh, yeah, eras or yeah. No, I can't choose an album. I'm sorry. Will you go vegan? Uh, might I might if need if I need to if I if uh, the world need me to be a vegan um, yeah I'm not, I'm I'm not pro anything or against anything I'm I'm for everything so and I've eaten a lot of great vegan food so yeah why not uh, Alex Hz. Is Silent Skies going to be a continuing of the last trilogy? No, it's not. Because it's not, it's one thing. Silent Skies is my band with uh, Vikram, Shankar, and uh, Evergrey is Evergrey. And Evergrey wrote a trilogy of the albums and uh, Silent Skies did not, so. But at the same time, I understand your question because I wrote the music in the same era of writing the Atlantic album, basically. So, yeah. A lot of stories get intertwined, maybe, or at least the feelings I've had had at that time. And but maybe, 
maybe Silent Skies portrays more the sorrow aspect and uh, the Evergreen music mixes the sorrow with the darkness and the anger. Uh, uh, do you think Torn will ever be released on vinyl? I think it is. Or if it's not, it should be any month. From Jacob Odell. Choo, choo, psk. I don't know, man. Would you consider remaking your own song Madness Caught Another Victim and making it a bonus track on the new album? I would love to hear that song rocked out. Distorted guitar for the first part and then back to clean time for the second. Add drums, bass and keys to make it a full band version. The long answer is no. The short answer is no. The third answer is I would love to see you make that uh, version of it though, to be honest. <sighs> Francisco Lino, Linos. Hi Tom, in November you played in with Evergreen in Chile. We was in a social outbreak at the time. What do you think about the social demands for better conditions of life, like good education, good health, better retirement, pensions, etc.? It's a very easy answer. I think everybody should have equal rights and uh, be able to survive when you worked, especially when you worked for a full life and need a, a retirement pension. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the, The world is so full of uh, unfair stuff that it makes me pissed off even thinking about it. So everybody should have what you just mentioned. Good education, good health and, and great retirement pensions even. Let's hear Rising Force. It's not a question. Hey, Carlos Valente Marin. What experience in your life inspired you to write All I Have? I answered this before. Uh, it's a third part of of a very long transition in my life. So you have to start listening to hymns for the broken, and then you can sort of follow the the uh, the thread there in a way. What sport do you enjoy? Soccer, of course, and Man U. Yes. Uh, Dane Herbst. Spill the beans on your cooking, as you seem to dig that. Well, I think I keep the cooking to myself, to be honest. Uh, and who else do you want to collaborate with in the future? Well, anyone. As I said before, when somebody answered about to be a summit, anyone that is a, is a quality musician that wants to have me on their music or vice versa, I love to. I like. I, I love these sort of branches reaching out in, in from sort of from the. I have so many friends that are in bands and I love to, to play with all of them. I mean, we have, yeah, I mean, uh, any collaboration with anyone that is interested, I'm interested in, for sure. Marco Molina. Hi, Tom. It's been 15 years since the release of A Night to Remember. You are damn right. Any plans for a full live concert release on Blu-ray and CD? I tell you the truth about this as uh, things is that it's so damn expensive to record a live show today and nobody wants to pay for it because people watches it on YouTube. So, but on the other hand, I see people crowdfunding stuff and, and things like this. And I'm, I agree with you that we are long overdue getting a new live show for you guys to watch. Uh, let's see if we can make it happen. Maybe we can make it happen together. Let's see. Right now we have to do this album and then we will, I mean, that's also the thing. We want to keep on producing music when we have the inspiration to produce new music instead of sort of celebrating the old. But yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. Same question were from Forever Grey JV as well. When are we going to see a new live DVD? Uh, mm hmm. What was your impression after the concert in Moscow, Russia? It was such a long time ago that I can't remember, but I remember having a great time and being at a vodka bar drinking only vodka, which I enjoyed. For us, it was an unforgettable moment and we are looking forward to see you once again. I really hope so. 
get us over there and we'll we come and play jason lanier brown when are you coming back to dallas and is the band tulip going to tour with you impossible to answer today isn't it what what if this was the end of all touring for all time i hope not but i'm really really getting worried and yeah we'd love to tour with tulip again again uh, we'd love to bring them to europe as well yeah any plans for a death metal band with clean vocals? No, nope, not from my end. Uh, AJ Carnell says, I, th I think it's Carnell, says the Night Rage stuff sounded great. Thank you so much. I also think it sounded great. It was a cool album to be involved with. Eric Epialis. These names, man, are hard to, when you don't know what country people are from, it's even harder to guess how you pronounce them. Uh, I'll just repeat my question from the last time because I'm still curious. I wonder about your creative process. When you come up with new songs, do you have a method to come up with a material that sounds different from what you've done in the past and does a lot of effort to go into comparing your current ideas to your back catalog? None of my efforts go into comparing anything to anything. It's uh, I think it make I, that I think that would harm me in a way. Uh, in a really bad way. Don't compare yourself to no one. Write new stuff and try to enhance your, your writing in that way. But I want to say that I would like to make a video just about talking about the creative process. Again, I think I mentioned this before earlier today, but uh, let's do that. Let's make one dedicated to only talking about creativity and how you can enhance and get better with your creativity and create inspiration for yourself and stuff like this. I would love you to do that. What say you? Uh, Hugo Agostinho. Hey Tom, when are you doing a live here on Instagram or on Facebook? I'm not. Uh, do you have plans to play in Dubai? I would love to have plans to play in Dubai. Uh, so call your rich friends and tell them to send us there. Alec Archer. Hi Tom, I'm in the process of making a cover for Currents. Great, and it's damn hard. Okay. The song itself and the recording process are both difficult. What do you think about working in the studio? I mentioned this earlier, I love studio work. Any tips to get your perfect guitar tone? No, uh, I can just show you someday what, I've do, uh, what I do myself and how I tweak it to sound good on my guitar with my fingers uh, and my ears basically. It's not necessarily gonna sound great on your guitar with your fingers and your amp. So. You know, these things are, you have to find your own, your own sound in a way. But yeah, we can talk about sounds as well. I'll, I'm a sound nerd. Lynn Janoska, what's in the box at the end of the All I Have video? Can I tell you yet? Maybe I can't. Maybe it's a part of a still ongoing process. That's my answer anyway. Beer is rockers champagne. Really? What is your favorite beer? Triple Carmelit from Belgium. It's a Trappist beer, I guess. I'm a stout and porter man myself. Vesa Moilanen wasn't that hard to pronounce, since I guess you're from Finland. Vesa. Horst von Nussbaum. What are some of your favorite albums outside of metal? Oh my god, don't even get me started. Outside of metal. I mean, pretty much... I mean, so much. Dire Straits albums, like Alchemy Live with Dire Straits is a great album to get into Dire Straits because you get to hear all of these songs from, from the past and great guitar solo playing. Dire Straits, Alchemy or Alchemy Live, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Pink Floyd, Momentary Lapsaries and Division Bell, favorite albums for me. I don't know if it's because Gilmore wrote a lot of parts on that album. Um, there's so many albums that I've listened to that are. Let's talk about albums one day as well. Key metal albums for me. Key non-metal albums for me. And, uh, and we can interact and talk about music. I'd love to. Uh, Eduardo Fogat, Foggiato, maybe. Maybe not with an Italian accent. Hi Tom, I have not seen or heard any voice better than yours. Oh, thank you so much. Your album, uh, Hymns for the Broken, is something out of this world. This, the music aftermath I've been hearing since you released the album every day. 
sometimes five times, always when I'm driving. Thank you very much for sharing your talent. Thank you, and thank you for listening. I'm also very happy with uh, the Aftermath song. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I appreciate that. Fusro Dahavari, 45 seconds. Maybe. Thank you for the videos. I've listened to your music for upwards of 17 years now, and you never fail to impress. It is really cool to see you in a more personal light and know that the man behind the music is just as fun as the music. Well, don't bet on it. Uh, my question would be, Evergrey has found a perfect balance of identifiable but fresh with every album release. Yeah, well, thank you. Is it difficult to keep the core identity of Evergrey in your sound after all these years without retreating? I, in a way, no. Because when we are playing it and, and singing it, it sounds like Evergrey, basically. Uh, the difficult part is, is keeping you know, yourself fresh and wanting to do more and, and uh, you know, be on your toes and hungry for, 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 uh, for more, basically. So now we're leaving the YouTube page and we're going to the Facebook page and let's see if we have... Stephen Bennett, old Manchester United fan. <laughs> See you on tour. Yeah, I hope so, man. Uh, some guy called Martin Papineau thinks we play great stadiums in Europe. We really don't. And his question is why we play smaller places in, in, in the US. Because we basically play the same size venues everywhere, to be honest. We play rock clubs and, and that's the level we are at. Some shows are bigger, some shows are smaller, some shows are huge, but those are usually festivals. I hope I uh, answered your question. Are Evergrey working? John Reed, are Evergrey working on a new album? And if so, when will it be released? Yes, we are working on a new album. It will be released on the 26th of February 2021, I think, with a single coming in November. See? Good question, because now you got an answer. Kevin Joseph, hello Tom, hope all is well. My question is, what's the most difficult song for you to play live? Well, the time, whether it be due to some vocals or guitars. Second question, what is your favorite album of all time? Favorite album of all time. Yeah, it's a tie in between. Division Bell, Momentary Lapse of Reason, and Operation Mindcrime, I think. But also Peace of Mind and Seven Son of a Seven Son and a lot of other albums. Uh, Angel Giovanni Hurtado Ragone, is it possible to see a new Evergrade DVD Blu-ray soon? I answered this before, I hope so. Maybe not, maybe, let's see. Uh, also, when are Evergrey going to tour? Something that John Reed asks again. Uh, well, quite impossible to answer, isn't it? Let's see when. Uh, let's see when the world is, is sort of getting back to its old, to, to its senses again, <laughs> and we can uh, rid ourselves of this disease. Uh, I hope. Uh, I hope it will be very soon. Because this, uh, this is our livelihood. This is what we live from. That's the truth. It's hard uh, making any money <laughs> if you're not being able to play for you guys. Joel. Jo hey, hi, Joel. Favorite non-metal band artist. I answered this before, but I'll do it again. I think it's Pink Floyd or Dire Straits or Susan Sunfer or Agnes Obel or... Um, Olafur Arnolds, I have so many. Uh, Arman Ashur, yeah. Any chance for a new Evergrey Live? Yeah. Uh, this marks the 25th anniversary of Evergrey. I answer, answer this. Your top favorite Evergrey albums, impossible. <laughs> Sorry. Christian Ceres. Uh, okay, I was saying mother's getting weaker, which is the correct answer to the, what I was playing in that song. How often does that beautiful piano get tuned? It 
it needs to get fucking tuned right now, I think. Twice a year is my best answer. Here comes a great question from Mano. Manu. I don't know how to pronounce his last name either, even though he also worked with every guy. Uh, what is a good guitarist in your opinion? Is it speed, feeling, tone and so on? What makes you go, wow, that's a good player? I think any player that plays with uh, such a big conviction, what do you call it? Conviction that, that he sounds good. That I want to believe that he sounds good as well, or that I can hear that he sounds good as well. Uh, everybody can say anything about Ingrid Malmsteen. Oh, he only plays fast and he only plays this. Ingrid Malmsteen can hold a note for 48 hours and he will crush anyone, basically, just by the vibrato and the feeling he has in his fingers. Uh, so, any person that is devoted to his guitar playing in that same sense. And I mean, I can mention a lot of people. Um, Paul Gilbert uh, uh, is one of those guys for me as well. Of course, Ingo Malmsteen, but then Adrian Smith and Dave Murray. How many solos can you sing that they play or in, uh, that they wrote? I can sing each and every solo. That's a quality that is, I mean, very often uh, overlooked, uh, creating great soloing, great solos is, uh, is also a, a real craft. Uh, I mean, guitar players, we can have a different discussion about, my god, we're gonna have a, god, a bunch of videos, man, if we're gonna talk about everything. But I do dig it, so let's do that. I hope that answered, but uh, being a guitar player where you can hear um, the nitty grittiness of his fingers being sort of worked into the fretboard. That's how I hear both David Gilmour and Ingrid Malmsteen in a way. They mean something, they have something to say. Yeah. Veronica Santoro, could you please explain the meaning of the song All I Have? All I have, all, all I have, no, no. I don't, I don't want to get into lyric details that much. Uh, it's about, basically it's about, but if to put it in like a compressed sentence, it's about, this is, this is me, this is what I've got, this is what I've given, I can't do more. Mike Lennon, how much writing do you guys do while you're on road or tour? Nothing, basically. I mean, sometimes a riff like um, My Allied Ocean, we wrote in Slovenia, I think. And that is one of the few songs that I remember that we did on tour, to be honest. Arturo Najera. Typical guitar tunings. We have five different tunings, so nothing typical about them. Uh, uh, it's a drop C, it's a drop D, it's a seven string tune in A, uh, for the new album, seven string tuning A dropped to G, uh, and uh, we had a tuning in on the song Fear as well. Called, I think it's also tuned in A, but on a six string. I might be wrong on this last one though. Uh, sing, sing, sing. I'm singing. Liz wants me to sing. It's another video as well. What is your favorite Evergrey song to play live? Oh, God. Depends on the night, basically. I really love All I Have some nights, and I always, almost always love to play When the Walls Go Down and The Grand Collapse and A Silent Arc. And, but I also like love those in, intimate moments, like Missing You and <sighs> Words Mean Nothing and songs like that. Please play the song in the wake of the weary. Okay. Maybe not. If I stay... Doll fan is uh, asking if I stay in contact with any of my former bandmates. If so, what, what are they currently up to? No, I don't, to be honest. Uh, well, Michael, the bass player. Uh, we are still in contact and he's doing a lot of different stuff. Uh, 
you should check him out. His name is uh, Magic Mike on Instagram, I think. What's your favorite part about touring the United States? Ask Nick Johnson. Well, favorite part that everything is so convenient. You can get anything at any time of the day, basically, or night in our cases. Uh, and uh, that, that's that's the thing, the the convenience of it. But not it's not convenient getting into your country. I'm telling you that much. Uh, Dario Delta, do you double track rhythm guitars when recording? And how many guitar tracks do you use on the DAW for a complete every great song? Mm. Impossible to answer. But for the main rhythm parts, we just do one guitar to the left, one guitar to the right. But back in the day, we did eight guitars to the left and 94 guitars on the right. And Henrik wanted 400 guitars in the back that nobody heard, and 200 in the front that nobody here heard either. We were fucking around a lot with production, uh, guitar production. <laughs> you should have seen us back in the day when we tried to find the the magic sound. This was crazy. But today. We have sort of come to the point where we do one uh, in each um, speaker and crossfade with two different mics. So yeah, and one guy records the riffs he wrote in a song and the other guy records the rest or the next riff. <laughs> Tanya Rousseau asks a very personal question. Uh, your biggest life challenge, how did you overcome it? And I can't really talk about that without going into details that I don't really want to get into. But I'm, you're seeing the result in the last 12 albums, basically. So uh, it's, it's been and is still a personal journey that I'm, that I'm on, I guess, for the rest of my life until I decide to pack it up, pack it in. What song was that? Uh, yeah, uh, those were that one, and now we're going to Instagram. Tell us about your rig in shows and studio. We should film this properly, but I use this amp over here. It's called a Bogner Uberschall that uh, Mr. Bogner built for me, uh, so it has some uh, alterations to the second channel and then I'm using uh, some of my comparison guitars uh, and other than that not that much to be honest uh, I have a boogie cabinet and uh, I can film it for you guys someday go through the guitars and the pedals I use uh, and uh, we'll make that a <laughs> another uh, another program yeah What happened to your solo album idea? I don't know what the solo album idea you're talking about, to be honest. I never had a solo album idea, I guess. If you're not mixing it up with the Silent Skies album, it's coming out in the fall, uh, September, I think. Second video, uh, first video in August or September, I guess. In the, uh, in the meanwhile, go and check out Silent Skies Horizons on your favorite uh, Spotify or whatever, Apple Music or whatever. Continuing with the Instagram, Missy Rod, if you, have to make a, if you want to make a musical project, what people of other bands would you choose to make it? I would like David Gilmour on backing vocals and uh, also composing and uh, play some soloing guitar. David Gilmour from uh, Pink Floyd. I would love to have Paul McCartney as well. Not that I'm a huge Beatles fan, but who, who can't be a huge Beatles fan? Of course everybody is, but but just because he seems to be such a lovely person. Um, and then I'd love to have uh, Adrian Smith. It's gonna be a lot of guitars in this album. On uh, my left. Am I singing in this album? Maybe not, right? And for drums... For drums... Ah, I keep Jonas for drums. Uh, and for bass, who's good on bass? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let's do the guy. Uh, hold on, let's do the guy from level forty-two because it looks funny. Uh, 
What are we barbecuing today? We're not barbecuing today. What was something you didn't expect to happen in your career? Oh, everything about it, basically. <laughs> Almost everything. Not anything is like I figured it to be, figured it out to be. It's, a, it's very weird. It's a, it's a weird, weird world to be in, but uh, I wouldn't want to be without it. Teixeira Andre, what did you think about your last concert in Rio de Janeiro? It was awesome. I love being in South America and, and Brazil. Uh, you make us feel so welcome and it's, it's like a... Uh, it's just amazing. I'm starting to get this allergic itching in the back of my throat, I feel. Let's see. Henrik Kark. What was your feelings and thoughts about the shows in Brazil last year? Same question. I always miss the crowd. Yes. Stay safe. You too, man. What was the video you has, had most fun making? Now, I'm gonna be totally honest. I hate making videos. It's the worst. It's... Uh, I love the end result, but it's so much work going into making videos. I, I'm not sure that all of you understand. Not even if you're making a performance video. You're standing there playing 400 times, looking as cool as possible. And uh, it's hard work, man, but somebody's got to do it. But favorite video, I don't know. Maybe uh, the one uh, for King of Errors was uh, high up on that crane in, in, in the city of Gothenburg. It was scariest. But also fun, yeah. Miss Mitch, Missy Mitch, 007. Hi, Tom. When you're touring and singing so much, how, how do you protect your voice and from from one gig to the next? I talk as little as possible. Even though if I enjoy having drinks with the guys after the show, I try to talk with as low voice as possible, like this, instead of raising my voice to this, because that wears me out. Now, when I've been answering your questions now for one hour plus, I'm feeling worn out already. So I try to do as little interviews as possible as well, which is, which is totally stupid. But if, I, if we do a 27 day tour and I talk and make interviews every day, I can't sing at night. And I think that's sort of key. key. Uh, so I let most of the other guys do the, the interviews at the times we're on tour. And she hopes that we can get to Australia after this is all over. Yeah, I really hope so too. Can't wait to get back to Australia. Uh, Jay Mills, will Karina be singing anything on the next album? No, probably not. Graziella Polastri, do you pretend to do some kind of live gig? I think she means intend. Uh, we're in the midst of recording and writing, so it's making it very hard for us to do it at this time, to be honest. So probably not. Maybe Rickard can come here and make this sound better. Probably not. Okay, my friends, I think that's it. Thank you so much for your patience. And if you was here from the beginning to the end, I really admire you because uh, it was a long one. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how we do these things, so uh, give me your comments, subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, give me suggestions uh, on how and what we should do different next time. Hope you have a great, great day, and uh, goodbye.